All right, everyone, today's adventure takes us to Holyoke, Massachusetts. It's the birthplace of the volleyball. They have a big one over here. As cool as that is, that is not the reason we are here today. Today's adventure brings us to the Mount Tom Reservation. We'll be going up to the 827 foot summit of Mount Nonatuck. And why are we going there, hon? Because we're going to see the ruins of William Street's dream that began in 1861 and it lasted four decades until 1901 when tragedy and eminent domain changed the rest of his life. Aww. Heading out this way. All right, so what was this guy's dream and what did it have to do with the top of a mountain? Well. He wanted to build a summit house on the top of the mountain called Erie. <laughs> now, Erie actually stands for nest of a large prey bird. Now, it was small. It only had five guest rooms, had a dining room, a parlor, and an observation room. He built right on the top so you could go up there and you could look around at all the views. Again, Ooh. the summit. Nice. Now, over the next couple of decades, this place became extremely, extremely successful. He ended up expanding to have 30 guest rooms. There were two promenades, one off each side, north and south. He had a pavilion that would hold 400 people. Underneath, it was stables for horses. Cool. He also had a picnic grove that would hold 125 people. And, catch this one, a new lookout tower. <laughs> so, we're hoping to go and find that. Oh, I almost forgot, he also had exotic animals up there. He had alligator, he had a monkey, and he had a bear. Oh, neat. That's pretty cool. But anyway, um, I think it's gonna be a fun day. Let's go. Baby, are you hiding something behind your back? I am. A geocache. Oh, cool. Hedgehog Hollow. Nice. So let's do what we do and get back to the video. We are starting our incline to the summit. Some of the road has no snow and some of it has snow, but it's kind of crunchy. So it's not too bad, but it's still paved. We're heading up this way. You cannot drive to the top. As a matter of fact, can you zoom in up there, hon? You can see where the road gets bad. I mean, it'd be fun in the Jeep. <laughs> right up there. So we're at an area. It looks like an old parking area. And these are the views. And looking down over there would be the Oxbow. And as you can hear, Miss Brandy is not happy because we are not continuing to move. The dog does not like to stop. <laughs> All right, Brandy, we can go in a minute. So we came up over there. And now we are going to the Eerie Ruins. The Eerie Ruins. Which go up this way. Let's go. We believe this is the cart road that they used to take to get up to the Eerie House. And this is the way we're going to go to go see the remains. And here we have our first signs of the ruins. Yeah. It's impressive. Yeah, very impressive. And there's a story behind it, too, that we're going to get to as we move along. So coming from this direction. Brands, stay here. From this section, this is where the southern promenade deck was. Yep. Yeah. All the way out to the end here, and then it was actually a child, cha uh, child swing, I should say, where parents would secure their child into it and then go down, probably under the other side of here and pretty much push on a pole. And the kids swung around. I kind of wish it was still here. That'd, look, that'd be fun. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Straight across over there with the tree antennas. Starting on the left, that would be Mount Tom. Followed by Dead Drop. I'm sorry, Dead Top. Followed by Whitting's Peak. What you're looking at here is the foundation of the original Erie House that was built in 1861. Of course, it was expanded over the years. This is all that remains here. Now, this is not the lookout tower that we were telling you about. This tower was built years later after the house was gone. It's just built where the house originally was. Now, well, made it to the top. This is what it looks like up here. Appears to be some kind of a communication tower. But the views now. Oh, Tom. This car you're seeing right here, that is the Oxbow. Which 
comes off the Connecticut River. There's Cheryl and Miss Brandlin down there. Now, though it's hard to see, this section here would be where the North Promenade was. Uh, again, it would be all decking, so they could get the views on the other side. I'm sure those trees weren't there. Yeah, well, they weren't that big. They were huge decks, though, walkways made out of wood. It's only been 118 years. <laughs> Now this is where we think the croquet area was and the picnic grove area. The airy house had become extremely successful. Unfortunately, when the 1890s came along, that wasn't as kind as the past two decades had been. The hotel was falling into disrepair. It was a wooden structure, so it was expensive to insure. So Mr. Street decided in 1893, he was just gonna build a new one while continuing to run this one at the same time. Unfortunately for him again, by 1895, he started losing a lot of his customers because they were going over to the new mountain park that opened. So with the lack of funds, he really couldn't be building his new motel. So they beat him to the punch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But seeing how we are out here, we are looking for the remains of the Outlook Tower that he did build. So let's continue to look. All right, it took a while, but you know, Cheryl and I like to be thorough. Now, when they first built the house in 1861, had the observation deck on the top of it. Well, later on, as years went by and things started expanding, Mr. Street put a lookout tower right here. <laughs> as I said, it took us a while to find it. You can see the braces right here. We found three of them. This is where the tower would have stood. Pretty cool stuff out here. So babe, what yeah. you doing? Well, the last place that we went, we were questioned by Becky about geocaches. Because <laughs> we forgot to look for them, but uh, we didn't this time, Becky. This is the Chabacaba cache, I believe that's how it's said. Chabacabra? Yeah, okay. <laughs> so anyway, we're gonna do what we do, get back to the video. This section here is where the pavilion once stood. Underneath the pavilion was a horse stable. I believe we would enter. Right here. So this section here shows the lava rock. Yeah. Trap rock, they call it. It's very cool. An old extinct volcano. In case you hear those noises in the background, those are military jet fighters. <laughs> <laughs> They're very loud today. Yes, they are. But you know what? Thank you, guys. They're very cool. Now, William Street was having a run of bad luck. And on April 13th, 1901, it was about to get a lot worse. As he was getting things done, trying to open for the new season, he went to the stable and found that a couple of the horses had passed away. And seeing that there's no place to bury them on the summit, he decided he would just cremate them up there. After the flames were out, he went back to the house for the evening. Hours later, he saw a raging fire outside. The flames had reignited and the whole top of the mountain was on fire. When it was finally all over, he had lost everything up there. $10,000 worth of damage. And unfortunately, due to insurance costs, he only had a $2,000 policy. And if you follow this path, you will come up to Lookout Point. The views aren't what they were, I am sure, because the pine trees have grown up. We're not sure, but we think this might be the area where the incline railroad was going to go. It was never completely built, so it's hard to say, but there's definitely man movement out here, it looks like. All the rocks are broken up and built up. Yeah. Pretty cool, though. And where Cheryl's standing is built up there, too, so. The Incline Railroad was supposed to go right to the door of the new motel, or hotel, I should say. Which never happened. Had it not been for that fire in 1901, this could be a completely different video. There'd be no ruins, there'd be an actual summit house here. No, we wouldn't do a video, it's not abandoned. I don't know, it could still be abandoned, it could just be standing. <laughs> but anyway, that's not the case, obviously. Uh, these are the ruins. 
of what would have been the new hotel. Now, to sort of rub salt in Mr. Street's wounds, the state offered to buy the property from him. They said, we'll give you $5,000 for the property. He turned around and argued that it was worth $25,000. They just could not come to an agreement anywhere. So the state just um, deposited a check in his name in a trust for $5,000, and they took all the land by eminent domain anyway. Mr. Street died in 1917 at the age of 78. He never cashed or claimed that check. All right, guys, there you go. The Airy House on Nonatuck Mountain here in Holyoke, Massachusetts. We showed you the ruins that are left over. Pretty fascinating place. Uh, definitely a day trip. Pretty easy to get up here, too. There's lots of exploring to do. Lots of exploring, especially if you want to go find out where that other lookout tower is. <laughs> so, but other than that, uh, if you like what you saw, we'd appreciate that thumbs up, as always. If you want to become part of We Are Mud Fun's uh, team, right down there in the corner. Click right there. Automatic subscription. Other than that, feel free to share and comment on this video. Right down below. Because until our next adventure, be in. <laughs> <laughs>